Hey, and welcome to T minus seven, Truth in Less Than Seven Minutes. I'm Jim, he's John. Hi. Thanks for joining us. Today we're gonna to talk about what, what do I do when I have authorities over me mm -hmm. that I don't like? Mm. And that maybe are- As a person? Yeah, I don't like them. <laughs> maybe I don't agree with them. Maybe they're bad. Mm. What does the Bible call me to do with those people? And the answer, uh, well, first of all, the frustration I've had really a lot of my Christian life is watching sure. people who I would say are godly people um, outlandishly criticize a governing official that they don't like or don't agree with. Absolutely. Whether it's the president, that the, the, you know, the big, the big bullseyes are the president and the governor, especially in the COVID world. Mm -hmm. And so, and during an election cycle, and I've seen Christians be just publicly venomous about a president that they wish was not in office or about a governor. And it's never rung true to me that that's, a, that that's an appropriate thing to do. Sure. Uh, and there's a passage of scripture where you say, well, what do I do? If I, if I have a governing person over me who's biblically wrong mm -hmm. or who is ungodly or who is advocating things that I think uh, are bad, what is it that I'm supposed to do? Yeah. And the answer is found in 1 Timothy chapter 2. And I just want to read the first verse. The first four verses, I think, really spell this out. But it's the first verse. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, I guess verse 1 and 2, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. Mm -hmm. It goes on to say this is good and pleases God because he wants all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. So here's what I would say is more important to God than the godliness of the leader that you're under. More important to God than that is everybody coming to know uh, Christ. Absolutely. For you to be holy and godly. And it's interesting, peaceful and quiet lives. When you think about uh, how do I live a peaceful and quiet life when I am opposed Mm -hmm. to the, the authority over me. Even in a job scenario, you might have, you might oh, have an yeah. employer and uh, you're opposed to that person. Yeah. Maybe you have real character problems with that person. How do you live peaceful and quiet lives in that scenario? Yeah, well, I mean, well, I think this is, uh, you, you talk about sometimes uh, prescriptive versus descriptive yeah. biblical advice. Yeah. I think this is, uh, you could call it both, but I would call it prescriptive where uh, when you, I think you would find when you pray for these people, so you sit there and just the amount of anger that people can feel yeah. for these political leaders, especially. Yeah. And it just, it dehumanizes, they don't have respect for them anymore. Right. That actually when you pray for them, it actually gives you that peace. Yeah. That it takes some of that anger away because you actually finally empathize. You view them as human. Yeah. You have kind of this respect again. And you can actually have a vision start to emerge in your heart for their good, for their redemption. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting because, because you, actually, you want the best for them. You want in, the in best for them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you want the best for, uh, if it's a political leader, you want the best for your country, for your state. In a job situation, you want the best for your company. Yeah. And so, uh, but, but even if they are hostile to you, the scripture says, uh, forgive those, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who persecute you. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I want to point out, this isn't, it doesn't say pray about them. And it doesn't say pray against them. It says pray for them. Yeah. And I found this to be a real attitude changer. I think you nailed it when you said you'll find your heart changing, calming, anxieties less, Absolutely. stress is less. And uh, so how do I pray for a leader that is ungodly, unbiblical, deceptive even, bad character, um, or wrong? Mm. Or I just don't agree. Well, he, he spells it out here. With, with four things, petitions, prayers, um, intercession, mm -hmm. and thanksgiving. So petitions, it means to, uh, to, uh, to pray about an urgent, immediate need. Sure. So if there's, a, if there's an immediate thing going on, um, as we've had uh, in this cycle of transition at the White House, uh, you pray for this urgent need for mm -hmm. harmony, for... Uh, peace, for unity, for God to push back division and hatred. 
prayers, it just means to tell, tell God what you want to tell him. Sure. You know, it's, talk to God. It's less immediate, I guess, than that, than, yeah. than petitions. Yeah, so if you say, well, my president's pro-abortion and I think abortion's wrong, then ask God to turn the hearts of our country toward life, not abortion. Mm -hmm. And what I was thinking about this exact example um, this morning. If you, if you want abortions to end, the best way to make abortions end is to have the hearts of human beings turned where nobody wants an abortion. Sure. And so you could pray about that. You could pray for uh, women who find themselves in unwanted pregnancies, that God would give them wisdom and, and favor and blessing. You could pray that God would raise up uh, resources for uh, unwed mothers or unwanted yeah. pregnancies so that they're not alone and they know that there's resources. You could pray for foster families. I mean, you could do a lot there. Yeah. Um, and then the third one is intercessions. And that's where you stand in the gap on behalf of someone. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when you think about interceding for someone you're not a fan of, can you think of how that might happen? Like wh how you might pray that way as an intercessor? Like let's say, let's say for the sake of discussion that you're not a Joe Biden fan, but he's your president. How could you intercede for Joe Biden? Uh, that one I actually have more questions than answers because that role comes up, you know, uh, Moses interceding for the people in the exile when they're being knuckleheads, Job interceding for his friends after they've, you mm -hmm. know, told him to curse God. And yeah. So I, I'm actually not entirely sure in this case how you intercede for. Yeah. Uh, for for, that, for me, I, I stand. In, I, I want to. I want to carry Joe Biden to the Lord, mm -hmm. and so I ask God to be gracious to him. I ask God to uh, uh, apprehend his heart. I ask God to give him um, an awareness of the nearness of God. I ask God to bring people into his world that will share faith with him that he trusts. Um, I, I might ask God to, uh, to orchestrate his own will through Joe Biden's life. Um, you know, those kinds of things. So sure. I, I, I think of if I were to take Joe Biden by the arm and say, Lord, this is, my, this is Joe, sure. and, I, and I want to talk to you on his behalf. I think it, that's kind of how I visualize that. The yeah. last one is Thanksgiving, and that's where you just give thanks to God because he is sovereign. Um, uh, your enemy is not flesh and blood. It is principalities and powers. So we know that uh, whoever's in the White House is not gonna define the destiny of a nation Absolutely. because God will define the destiny. Yeah. And so we trust that, we give thanks for that. I think this is huge. And a, a big part of it is obviously, first it's it's the, your actual piece of, of self that, you know, uh, uh, to, to be healthy and, and spiritually whole and honoring God. Mm -hmm. But another huge part of his witness is yes. that these people who behave this way under, under persecution or differences, it's a huge, huge witness to the power of the kingdom of God. It is, and I, it makes me think of Jesus on the cross. Mm -hmm. Father, forgive them. Mm -hmm. They don't know what they're doing. And you know what, they didn't. They didn't know what they were doing and neither do the people today that we disagree with or we don't even know what we're doing. Yeah. But when people are wrong, yeah. they don't know what they're doing. And so we pray for them. So here's your encouragement. Pray for the people in authority over you. Don't pray against them. Don't pray about them. Pray for them. And see if God doesn't turn your heart in a different way and answer your prayers. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, thanks for joining us. Uh, may God bless you. Have an amazing rest of your day. John, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.